Liz, Sam. <laughs> Today, I mean, we were standing out here and we saw the Free Britney crowd erupt into cheers. Given the fact that you two have devoted so much time and energy in two documentaries to this, how do you feel about today's outcome? Um, I mean, you know, Britney has been asking for this for a long time. We know from the confidential court documents that we um, obtained that at least as early as 2014, she's been talking about uh, removing her father, trying to communicate it to the court. So I think, you know, it feels like it's been a really long time that she's been communicating this. So it was definitely very moving to be in the crowd uh, when everyone realized that it happened. Yeah. Liz, you were in the courtroom. Um, we were getting some bits and pieces that um, Jamie's attorneys were questioning the New York Times uh, content and that Matthew Rosengart was adamantly saying he was looking into these allegations. What was your reaction when you were hearing some of that discussion of the work? I was surprised because Jamie's lawyer seemed to refer to it as just a television show, seemingly dismissing the allegations. But we made repeated efforts to request for comment for them, and they never denied the allegations that they wiretapped uh, Britney's bedroom and that they read her texts with her lawyer. Can you tell me about, that information has become so key. Matthew Rosengart was just talking about it again here now. What was it like for you to, I don't know how you made contact, but to first hear from that former member of the company that did Britney's security? And as you're hearing these allegations, what, what did you know that you had there? Yeah, I mean, I think we were both totally shocked. Um, he reached out to us, and the first time we talked to him, we talked for 10 hours, actually, because there was just so much to talk about. Um, and I think, um, you know, you had heard rumors about things for a long time, but to actually see someone come forward with evidence um, and and of things that seem even more extreme than than we would have imagined or the public would have imagined, it was it was a really uh, surprising conversation. So one thing that's revealed is that this employee kept a file he was told to delete, uh, 180 hours of audio recordings. Where is that content now, and what's happened to it? So we reviewed a copy of the audio recording in order to authenticate that it was real, and it was really disturbing to listen to. You know, Brittany's being recorded in her bedroom, and her interactions and conversations with her kids, her boyfriend, and others were secretly recorded. So Matthew just told me he's uh, he's going to keep looking into this. He's going to pursue and look at everything Jamie did over this decade, including that. Are you all working with him at all, sharing your findings with him? Um, I mean, we're, we're the New York Times, we're journalists, so uh, we're not working with lawyers. Um, Why didn't, I mean, could you potentially be subpoenaed? Would you have to hand anything? <laughs> I, d I don't know. We'll see. We haven't been contacted yet by law enforcement. So from here, where do you two go? I mean, I think the fans and ev the public were so incredibly captivated to see a second piece from you. Will there be more from here? You know, we're, we're still continuing to report. The star story is far from over, so we're still looking for people with, uh, you know, firsthand experience and, and evidence of, of anything they want to come forward and tell us about. Um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. We filmed here today just in case, so... Um. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot more to report. Over the last 13 years, a lot happened. A lot of money was made. A lot of people were involved, and we want to investigate everything. Being in the courtroom today, if you can just kind of, you know, give me your your version, your take on what the experience was like, the back and forth between those lawyers. So there was a really long back and forth between Brittany's lawyer, Matthew Rosengart, and Jamie's lawyer, Vivian Thoreen. And it was really hard as a bystander to see which way the judge was going to rule. There were various times where it seemed like Vivian was winning. Other times it seems like Matthew was winning. And then ultimately when the judge said, I'm going to remove Jamie, it was uh, pretty shocking. Uh, we heard out here, was there a, a, an actual gasp in the courtroom? I didn't hear a gasp in the courtroom, but I would have loved to hear the reaction out here. Yeah, I have, I've, I'll, I'll send the, you the video. It was cheers. It was we did it. It was he's gone. It was um, So, yeah, I mean, the, again, the movement, you know, I, the movement really did this. And when you all look at the totality of this, what do you think you will remember the most about today? 
Um, I mean, I, I think for me, it will be um, the, the people that I saw shaking when they heard the news, and I was lucky enough to kind of be in the center of everyone screaming around me, so probably that, because a lot of these fans, they had this feeling something was wrong for so long, but they didn't know, um, and they were kind of going on this gut instinct. People were calling them conspiracy theorists, calling them crazy. I think somebody said to me, like, who's crazy now, or something, But and I, and I think um, they really stuck to their instincts and it, so it's a big deal. Yeah, I think I'd also say just seeing the faces of people who've been at these rallies for years now and who had, you know, when there were just tiny, tiny crowds and now seeing the, all the energy and all the people, that's just very memorable. Do you all have more uh, that you, people came to you with more, you might have more that you couldn't share uh, legally or that you might share in the future? That's two separate questions. I think, yeah, we have a lot of information that we're still reporting out and trying to corroborate and we hope to publish.